Greetings, folks. This is Mason Weaver. Actually, this is Clarence A. Mason, also known as Mason Weaver. There are some things in our history, dates in our history, that we always remember and always re reflect on. Things that have changed our lives and direction of our lives, you know, marriages, births, deaths, so forth. Today is April the 4th, 2019. 51 years ago today, April the 4th, 1968, I had joined the military. Also, it was the day that Dr. King was murdered. I joined the military for a number of reasons. Uh, patriotism, left my country, get the heck out of where I was. Uh, but I joined the Navy because I wanted to do something for my nation, primarily the reason. Dr. King was murdered that same night. I was conflicted between my love for my country and doubt that my country loved me. But I fought to change it. I didn't beg and whine and, and cry. I didn't protest and demonstrate. I did not burn down my neighborhood. I did not ask and beg for gifts and reparations. I was a grown man. And I was going to first defend my nation and then come back and restore my nation to the promise that it had for all of us. And I didn't blame white people. I hated white people after a while because someone tried to kill me. That's personal different. I did not hate America. Never hated America. And what's happened today is kind of strange, folks, because, you know, when, when, I, when I joined the Navy in April, by December of 1968, I'm going to Vietnam. 1968, December, this nation was on the verge of much, much change. This nation was on the verge of transforming itself. In 1968... We hadn't even gone to the moon yet. In 1968, we didn't have, have a clue of the internet. In 1968, we was at war with ourselves and war with communism in Vietnam. But there was a communist problem in Vietnam. It's not becoming a communist problem here to us. So I'm, I'm just concerned now that the, the problems we fought in 1968 is still existing today. When I was in Vietnam, they had, you know, guys on our ship, or not on our ship, but guys on our base that we thought were communists, that we thought were the enemy. They came during the daytime to work and spy and went back at night and fought with us. And I asked this merchant downtown, you know, in, in the middle of the cities, some little small towns, they were capitalists. They were trying to earn some of that American money. They had stores and services to you. They'd get you little cab rides, little carts on the, on the side selling all kind of exotic foods. And I asked the gentleman once, he had a, he had a cart. I said, why are, you, why are your people fighting us so much? We're here trying to establish democracy. We're here trying to establish a republic where you can vote and, and take control of your And you, as a, as a businessman, you have control of your income and save things for your family. Why are they fighting? He said, because the story being told is that the people will own the land. The people will produce what they need. The people will take care of themselves. And they don't know, Mason, that the people means the government. The people means the rulers. The people means those who are going to take care of us. They don't know they're fighting for their own slavery. And look at today. We're told the people will control the avenue of success. The people will control big business and big oil and big. The people, what they really, really, really mean is they will control by forcing the people to bow down to them. So I'm still fighting communism. I'm a little confused. You know, when I got injured, you know, I, I was a strong, healthy young man. And, and this is my shit for the shop that I worked in. Heavy metal, heavy steel, welding, construction, all metal. Navy was metal. Wasn't no plastic around, folks. We had to use metal. I was learning a skill to compete in America. I couldn't understand what happened to my country. I went to Berkeley and went to, went to the military, went to Berkeley, you know, got my degree and went out and tried to participate in the American dream. But something has happened to my nation now. Something's going on now. And now I've realized that we are all slaves. We are going back in the pop. We are demanding to be protected we're demanding to be submissive to. We're demanding that the superior people take care of us. What happened to America? It's time that we leave the plantation. It's time that we stop demanding that someone else takes care of us. It's an affront to what our country is. I'm a black American. In case you haven't noticed, I'm a black American. I've been black all my life. But America owes me nothing. I owe America everything. As a black man, some of you folks have said to me, I've heard you. If you're not happy with American Mason, go back to where you came from. 
Go back to Africa where you came from. Let me say something to you first. I have never been to Africa. That's like telling you to go back to Europe. I'm not doing that. I'm not going anywhere. I have my ancestors built this nation usually for free. We defended this nation, fought in every war this country ever had. We have established ourselves in every historical, political, social, economical, entertainment, industry. Everywhere America has done anything, we have been a part of it. This is my nation. I've been here eight generations that I know of, and I'm going to be here. You and I are going to have a lot of fun together trying to redirect America, but we're going to do it together here in America. I accept you where you are. I accept America what they have been. This is a great nation. This actually is a perfect nation because it's made up of humans. It's not perfect, but there are perfect humans here. We are a perfect nation. Our ideology, our culture is perfect, and we should stand and defend it here first, here first, because the enemy is here in our face trying to demand that we take care of ourselves under their control, trying to demand we go back into poverty, trying to demand it control every aspect of our life. You have no control over anything you do today this morning you everything you do is controlled and influenced and regulated by your government you cannot think of one thing you do that is not controlled by your government america wake up america there should be something you do every day that you are totally control of but your slave masters on that plantation have done that for you and i've i've discovered the enemy the first thing you do when you go to battle is discover the enemy it's time that we stop playing games with the enemy folks the Democrat Party, the Democrat Party is the enemy of America. They hate America. My new book is coming out in a few months. The Democrat Party hates America. Listen to what they say. You can tell Democrats from anybody else because they tell you what they think by what they accuse you. They accuse you of being mean-spirited, hateful, intolerant. They accuse you of being homophobic. They accuse you of doing things, and that's exactly what they are. They've always been the party against freedom. They were a party against slavery being free. They were a party against women's rights to vote. They were a party against the Indians' right to exist. They were a party against civil rights. They've always been a part of it. And they tell you that they have changed, that we split parties, we change sides. Okay, how do you determine that? How do you determine if Republicans became Democrats and Democrats became Republicans? It's simple. Look at the effect. The Democratic Party owns every ghetto in America, every inner city in America. Everyone belongs to the Democrats. Look at what is happening there. Name me a Democrat-controlled city that you can brag about, that you can brag about the schools, the police, the laws, where you can brag about the business opportunities, where you can brag about, the, about what's going on in that community. They are the party of hatred and poverty and dependency and misery and failure. I used to be a Democrat. I was a good Democrat before I realized I was supporting slavery of my people, Americans. And I decided to stop that. So as a Vietnam veteran, I continue to battle. We can never, you can never give up on freedom. You can never stop fighting freedom because the enemy will never stop trying to come at you. It is a constant battle to leave a legacy for your children and your grandchildren. You will never win the battle, but you should never give up the battle. The battle for freedom is unique and powerful. So I'm asking you Americans today, are you ready to leave the plantation? Be prepared for freedom. We have to prepare a place for them. So I'm asking you to join our new organization. We're still building it. The website's not ready yet. Tough. Get on it and join anyway and volunteer. And let's bring our people together. A place for those low left Democrats who are tired of being abused because the Democratic Party is, I said Democratic, the Democrat Party is the party of slavery and abuse. It's an abusive belief system. And when they get tired of it, they have to leave. And when they leave, they're going to lose their friends and relatives and family members. They're going to leave and lose everything they have to culturally secure themselves. They're going to lose it. And you had better, we had better have a place for them to come to for comfort and growth and, and honest reflection and love. That is leavetheplantation.org. I expect you to join us. I expect you to gear up for this battle we have in the next couple of years. And I expect you to be standing with us on the hillside where total victory is ours. This is Mason Weaver. Stay right or be left. Eternity is a long time to be wrong.